managed to get through the IBM interview, scraped in, and thank heavens that was outside of Chennai, but not too far. Right after I am, I was at BCG for about four years. I really start started missing IT and desperately wanted to get back. I had to pick the one option that I got, which was with Infi Consulting. So I moved to London. So most recently, I was co-founder uh, and CEO of Gramla, which is a company that we started. My exit options were clear. I mean, post IIT, you either do a master's in your subject, which was no way, or software or CAT. So I tried both, wrote CAT, completely messed up, managed to get through the IBM interview, scraped in, and thank heavens that was outside of Chennai, but not too far. So, and given that I had enough relatives in Bangalore, I was allowed to go spend some time in Bangalore. Right after I am, um, I was at BCG for about four years. And this was the time you were in BCG doing consulting, and I'm, I'm guessing maybe traveling a lot as a consultant, or did you have more of a? Luckily, not too much. The only travel that I had to do, but for a short trip to the US, was between Bombay and Delhi, oh. and occasionally to Bangalore. So not. Too what much sort of sectors? Of what sort of projects were you doing? Tell us a bit more about that. Mostly financial services because BCG at that point was led by uh, the financial services practice was led by Janmay Sinha and he was very much into and he had several contacts in the banking sector. So we were working with the likes of uh, ICICI, several public sector banks like Punjab National Bank and so on. And, and that's most of what I was doing. I knew nothing whatsoever about banking and this was a great learning opportunity and it was actually solid experience that way. Uh, <clears throat> played around, looked at various uh, sectors within banking, but at some point I figured I do like IT. So at least let me get into an IT project. That was not trivial because we didn't have any IT projects. James Abraham, who was one of the partners who was more on the IT side in Delhi, had just about landed a project with Oracle to do some sales consulting for them. I said, okay, I need to be on this project. So I call up James and say, James, keep me in mind. I said, okay, sure, except this is in Delhi and we'll see, we'll see. Fine. Days approaching, the kickoff is supposed to happen a day. The next day, no word from James. So, okay, fine. <clears throat> the next day morning, I call up James and say, James, I'm at the Bombay airport and I have in my hand a ticket for the Delhi airport. Should I get on the flight? He laughed and said, okay, if you're that desperate, then Ajah. <laughs> and that's how I wormed my way into the first IT project that we did. And that's quite needs. surprising because in the noughties, uh, we're talking about early noughties when India was like coming up as a um, tech um, ecosystem <coughs> was starting uh, and all that. And BCG had no IT projects at that time or very few. Uh, so BCG had started and mm. when I joined I was, was what less than 50 members in the team right so it was not very much uh, an entrenched presence at that point in fact the bulk of your batch our batch they are the senior partners in the system today and uh, <laughs> that's effectively how uh, it was at that time what happened next then were you in BCG and for a long time I really start started missing IT and desperately wanted to get back. So I started applying. <clears throat> Oracle said, we'll give you a sales job. Microsoft said, we'll give you a strategy job. IBM said, we'll give you a project manager job. But ultimately, nobody would let me code. So I had to pick the one option that I got, which was with Infi Consulting, where Infosys Consulting said, look, we are taking you into the consulting wing, but okay, fine, you can do whatever software engineering you want as part of that. So I moved to London, but around, uh, 2011, uh, my ex-manager from IBM, he reached out and said, there are a bunch of us, we are getting together, planning to do something interesting. So, do kuch karte hain. And at that point, it was literally kuch karte hain. And eventually, it became Gramner, which is a story in itself. But uh, since 2012, I've been in Gramner, which is a data analytics and visualization company. And, uh, and you joined it right at from scratch, like when it wasn't even a, a company registered. 
and uh, that was an interesting journey as well uh, ranging from covering the elections on national television to uh, discovering whether astrology and numerology have an impact on students marks to a whole host of fairly interesting pieces of work which eventually culminated in a few months ago grammar being acquired by strive which is a publishing edtech and data company and that's where i will be post the integration closure which is happening this month then so so tell us your professional and personal journey post iim uh, when you married what you were doing in bcg where it started off and you you've given us a summary i mean you were doing consulting of course but what type of projects were these uh, coming out of iim what did you learn and what new things did you learn that you didn't know as an mba graduate so um post iim the de facto choice was investment banking or consulting and i had my summers at lehman i realized investment banking is not for me i unfortunately did not have the benefit of a consulting internship because if i had i would have realized consulting is not for me either software is for me and it took me some time to figure that out but yeah i mean like uh, i said earlier it was a series of mistakes beginning with me joining iit and then leaving ibm to join iim now leaving iim to join bcg instead of software firm was yet another one in that series of mistakes i've never worked in consulting but i've been told that a consultant takes your watch and then tells you the time what's your experience with consulting how much of a value add is it to an enterprises when i was a consultant i realized a couple of things firstly i am not a consultant the partner is consulting and i am the partner's research assistant associate slide deck producer whatever which is a fantastic learning experience it's also a great way to move up the curve but i am not consulting. so in a way that's good for the client because the client is at least getting better expertise than from someone like me having said that a significant chunk of the interactions that the client team members have not necessarily the main stakeholder are with people like me and we ask more questions than give answers so that perception has a basis just why is this guy coming and asking 200 questions about my industry when he's going to go tell my boss stuff that's based on what i said that part of the perception or where it comes from has a basis does it really add value i don't think i could have answered this when i was at bcg but now that i'm outside of bcg i at least can partially answer it by saying yeah i would hire a consultant because you i've would. seen i would hire a consultant okay After knowing mm. that people like me would be mm. on the other side there is still value why is that <clears throat> just outsourced clear headed thinking <clears throat> management needs to be outsourced as well and there is a pool of good management capabilities sitting out here in some of these why would i not hire when i need some excess capacity at some point if i have an initiative it makes sense second why would i not hire somebody who has a perspective that is outside in rather than inside out we sit and discuss the same bloody problems and the make the same bloody mistakes the first 3 months when a person enters our organization they are fantastic and we try and use them as much as possible in those first 3 months because after that they are house trained done for now here is a pool that not only consistently thinks outside in but also brings benchmarks from elsewhere and forces us having said that there is also the potential valid or otherwise of using them as rubber stamping my opinion yes they can be helpful for that the sheer fact that i spend a lot of money on something makes it important for me so i will do it that's the same reason why i would go to a gym rather than exercising by myself and it has some value so those are there i consider those less lesser reasons to hire a consulting firm than the first two that i felt strong so most recently i was co-founder uh, and ceo of gramna which is a company that we started who are your uh, clients are these clients big enterprises who have a lot of data and asking you like uh, can you find me some trends in the data or is your client government organizations or states like who are your clients primarily like where does 80% of your revenue come from 80% from corporates but close 20% from the likes of governments and invariably large the at least uh, but for our first few years we haven't had many clients that were even 
medium enterprises let me explain